Wow. That's going well. Whoa, what a jump. Coming right at me. He jumped three feet in there. Like a small mat. Whoa, look at that go on the boat. And go. <laughs> Here you come. Coming up. Ooh, going down. Whee! There we go. How you doing? Huh? You doing okay? Yeah, you are. Today, I'd like to devote this show to two important conditions that have a major impact on what lies below the surface. They are temperature and oxygen. Fish like the bass are governed almost completely by the conditions in which they live. Barometric pressure, weather, wind direction, stages and condition of water, dissolved oxygen content, food supply, and solar conditions all combine to govern the action of the bass. But of all the conditions, water temperature is by far the most important. More important than oxygen, you might be thinking? Well, first of all, temperature directly affects the amount of oxygen dissolved in the water. Now that's something we're gonna discuss in a little bit. But right now, we're gonna focus on water temperature. And I'm gonna try to get this bait out there and catch one. Most times water temps can tell you a whole lot. For instance, it can tell you the activity level or mood of the fish, the best location, the ideal depth, help you with your lure selection and presentation, what time of day or night is best, and in some cases, even the body of water you're planning to fish will be productive or not. So, as you can see, water temperature may be a lot more important than you ever thought. Yep, the old bass is a flexible, adaptable, hardy fella that can tolerate a wide range of water temperatures, from just above the freezing mark to over 90 degrees, but normally cannot survive an extremely rapid change of temperature. Their comfort zone is normally between 65 and 80 degrees. That is fun. <laughs> you fool yourself, aren't you? All right, little man, come on. You got a different kind of crawfish in your face then, didn't you? All right, easy. Easy does it. Easy. Easy does it. Easy does it. Get that little bitty hook out of your face. You know, water temperature is a lot more important to a bass than air temperature is to people. We get cold, what do we do? We put on a coat. We get hot, we take it off. Well, a bass can't do that. He's got to take whatever Mother Nature gives him. Bass being cold-blooded creatures, they're always aware of water temperature, and this can determine a large part of where they'll be and how they react. Let me tell you just what water temperature does. It dictates how bass's metabolism works, at what rate they digest their food, how often they become hungry, when they spawn, where they travel, when they suspend, when they move shallow or deep, and like I said, where they'll be and their activity level. There's a fish right there. Yep. They run off in that deep water. Oh, look here, that's a better one. Whoop, 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 whoop. Easy. Don't make me. Come on, little man. That light line. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. 
Got that little crawfish in your face. Yes, you do. Don't, don't you get cute. Don't you get cute. Don't get cute. There we go. Let me tell you, successful fishermen know the importance of water temperature and have a surface temperature gauge on their boat or graph because they can keep an eye on it for abrupt or noticeable changes. Surface temperatures are important because it gives you a starting point. When you see cooler or warmer surface areas, it's best to use an accurate, quality-built electronic hand unit that works by lowering a probe into the water to quickly check the temperature at various depths. It's a fact that mid-range to bottom temps are much more important than surface temps, assuming there's an adequate supply of oxygen there, especially during the summer months. Is that the one? Yep. Whoa, look at here. Look at here. Oh, that's a better one. Ooh. Where are you going, boy? Woo! Tuffy! Tuffy! Mr. Tuffy! You came off that top of that grass smoking it. Yes, you did. A little bitty hooks. How you doing? Huh? You doing okay? Okay, I bet you are. Say ta-ta. You know, we were talking about those mid-range depths a minute ago. Let me tell you something. In the spring, for instance, I've seen surface readings of 50 degrees and five feet it would be, say five feet deep, it would be five to six degrees colder, down to, say, 44 to 45 degrees. From the surface to five feet, it'd be a difference of five degrees difference. Now, at another location, I'd get a 50 degree reading on the surface and find a 49 degree reading at five feet. Only one degree difference at five foot. That alone can tell you where the most active fish should be. Finding out this information can be a big tip off to the location and depth that bass are using. Only a few degrees can and will make a major difference. Of all the different conditions, one of the easiest for a fisherman to determine and a condition that has a tremendous effect on where to find the bass, it's water temperature. Okay, now, let's discuss the other important condition, oxygen. Most fish, including bass, require plenty of dissolved oxygen. Fish filter DO out of the water through their gills, and they're extremely aware of even minute changes in the oxygen level. To define what DO stands for is dissolved oxygen. It's the amount of oxygen dissolved in a solution and available to support living systems. It's more of a seasonal condition where water temperature is a year-round condition. Every living thing in the water column depends on adequate DO to survive. This includes aquatic plants, algae, phytoplankton, zooplankton, as well as fish. Bass do their best when dissolved oxygen concentrations are over six parts per million. When DO drops to three parts per million, serious conditions can occur. Bass become stressed and practically quit feeding, plus their growth rate slows, and they're more likely to contract diseases. Below two parts, they often rise to the surface and breathe air. And if this condition doesn't change quickly, what happens? They die. These low DO conditions normally occur during the summer when the water temperature really begins to heat up. Speaking of temperature earlier, it directly affects the amount of oxygen dissolved in water. As the temperature of water rises, the DO levels start to decrease. As the temperature begins to cool down, the water is able to hold more oxygen. Example, 
At 77 degrees, fresh water that is 100% saturated with oxygen will contain 8.26 parts of oxygen. At 90 degrees, it will contain 6.95 parts per million. Is that on you? That's a little hickey. All right. You know, during the summer and early fall, it's difficult to find 100% saturated water. Now, it's important to remember that water that contains living things will all be using the oxygen. The oxygen content of a body of water fluctuates daily. Levels, now what they do, they often drop at night and rise through the day, especially if it's sunny, particularly where aquatic plants abound. Now, during the hot months, this situation occurs on many of the lakes I fish, oxbows, lowland reservoirs, farm ponds, wetlands, and so forth. Now let me show you a little unit that has helped me more times than I can count when oxygen levels are low. It's called an oxygen monitor, and it shows me not only where to fish, but where not to fish. Another feature I like about this unit, it has a temperature gauge that gives me accurate readings up to 25 feet deep. Whoa, look at here. Look at here. Oh, that's a better one. Ooh. Where are you going, boy? Woo! Tuffy! Tuffy! Mr. Tuffy! He came off that top of that grass smoking it. Yes, you did. Yes, you did, Buster. Hooks. How you doing? Huh? You doing okay? Okay, I bet you are. Say ta-ta. You know, naturally, it's impossible to cover everything there is about temperature and oxygen in just 30 minutes. But hopefully, we've made you more aware of just how important these two factors are to successful fishing. The more you know, the better fisherman you'll become. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.